Billy Ho here. Welcome to Billy Ho Sports. In this week's stakes races, we've got derbies, we've got oaks, and we've got other states other than Kentucky involved in horse racing, which is always a good thing. So basically what we're going to do today is I'm going to do this one on the Indiana Derby. we got a nine-horse field, uh, three-year-olds going a mile and a sixteenth. Uh, we have some feature horses in the in here that were Derby, uh, Kentucky Derby horses, and some other really solid choices. Uh, so maybe leave a comment below and let me know who you like above five to one. Maybe one of those eight to one or, or double digit odds even better. Give me somebody with some value. Sounds good to me. I love crowdsourcing. So anyway, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I'm almost to a thousand subscribers. We're going to get there. My horse racing fans and followers are the ones that have done it for me. Uh, I didn't take off until uh, I recognized how popular you guys are and how passionate you are about horse racing. I've always been so myself. I just never really got into creating the content for it, but I really, really enjoyed doing this. It uh it makes me better. I've I've been actually winning more than losing lately, <laughs> breaking even instead of getting creamed. So, you know, just watching extra videos, doing extra research is helping me as a handicapper, and I'm hoping it's helping you. So, like I said, smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. <laughs> Okay, uh, before we get into the horses, I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse at the weather for Horseshoe up north in Indianapolis. Thunderstorms likely in the morning, then a chance of scattered storms in the afternoon. Gusty winds and small hail possible. Uh, the wind doesn't look too uh, too bad, you know, sustained, but you never know with gusty winds, but we can't predict that. Don't worry about the wind. This ain't golf. Uh, but the chance of rain is 70%, and it could get nasty. I don't know about delays or anything like that. But if it rains in the morning, rains if it, they get a lot of rain, uh, it's definitely going to affect conditions. Obviously, we could have a sloppy track or a straight-up muddy track, depending on how much rain we get. So just off-track possible. Just put that in your lizard brain. Uh, so obviously, we're going to start horse one, transect. Uh, I'm going to get away from that. Excuse me just one second. This is uh, the gambling calculator I like to use, and we'll polish it off with that here in a little bit. But we're not there yet. Transact. Uh, 15 to 1 morning line odds, uh, one at this track in his first start on the fast dirt surface. We're looking right now at past performances for Transect. Uh, people may look at that terrible Gotham result uh, where he got killed in the mud. It, that was an odd race I, I, and a weird one. Uh, muddy, slower track might not have suited him. So if it's an off-track Saturday, I'm I'm probably not likely to include him, but he's a pretty – Pretty solid value and has speed from the rail and could hang on for a share of the purse if the pace is fair. So I kind of like that. Uh, the jockey Gerardo uh, Corrales and trainer is Paolo Lobo. Ray's Kane. Uh, obviously, we know that name. Uh, sort of eighth place or something like that in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Skip the Belmont to run here was... Uh, the winner, this was the winner in that sloppy Gotham stakes at uh, Aqueduct back in March. So will be a major force if he can du duplicate that form, but I just haven't seen it. I just raised Kane has been just kind of wishy-washy to me. Uh, so anyway, he could, if he repeated that uh, effort at Aqueduct, then I would definitely like him. But uh, so if there is an off track, if it does happen to get that way, maybe raise Kane, uh, not a hundred percent. But uh, he didn't really fire in, in the slop on a sloppy track at Ellis. But I don't think that, that the sloppy track was that sloppy. Uh, you could see a lot of uh, the the horses ran uh, pretty solid races there. So anyway, uh, Ben Colebrook, trainer, Luan Macchiato is the jock. And now, act a fool. Six to one in morning lines. Trainer Larry Ravelli had a bit of tragedy uh, here recently, sort of. Two fills, the winner of the Ohio Derby and almost winner of the Kentucky Derby. 
uh, had a career career ending ankle injury. So uh, they were going to put him on the shelf at first, but they decided to retire him. Uh, best move they could make. Uh, so anyway, act a fool. Uh, never run a stakes race on dirt. He has enough early speed to grab the lead, but I don't think he can hold it. Uh, Orlando uh, Monica is uh, the rider, or Mojica. I'm sorry. Uh, my glasses are foggy. Anyway, on the stage, the four horse, I kind of like this one, uh, has taken some big strides forward. I like horses that move up. Last two starts, broke his maiden by a head, then romped by six and a half in an allowance, both out at Lone Star. Uh, continued improvement can make him a top contender here. Uh, big, bigger step forward probably required, but he was able to overcome some slower paces if you look uh, closely on the pace, first call, second call on, on the stage. They have a uh, big negative number there, which means there were slower paces. So for closers, slower paces, not so good. But he was able to get past both of those to catch the leaders. So uh, I do like that. Uh, Steve Asmussen trained. I uh, always like that. And Luis Fuentes, Jock. Number five, uh, verifying eight to five favorite. I liked him in the Derby. He didn't get it done. Thought Johnny V would be able to get him out there, which he did get out there, but he just didn't stay out there. Uh, so anyway, he's placed in multiple grade uh, one stakes as well as grade threes, but has yet to register a grade of stakes win. The second in the Matt Wynn stakes, and I kind of called that one. I thought Disarm would catch him, and he did. Uh, so he can be caught. He gets to lead, and he runs a good race. That's probably who you see coming down the stretch. But will he be able to hold these guys off? And I think this is probably this weakest competition to date. So that breakthrough win needs to come in this race. No more excuses for the son of Justify. Top choice. Trainer Brad Cox. Uh, the jockey will be uh, Marcelino Pedrosa, Jr. Uh, number six, stay in your lane. He's still a maiden hunting after running and claimers and stuff. He's a toss. Uh, so not going there. Hayes Strike is the next one up, three to one morning line. Was a distant third to two fills in the Ohio Derby, but he does have a good late kick and he can make him definitely a factor in the final furlong here. So if they get a fast pace, it would definitely help him or an off track would, would probably help him as well because I do believe the eight horse uh, is Caliostro and uh, – I think we can, can we call him the Italian mage? I don't know. Anyway, I looked it up to make sure I got the pronunciation right. Cagliostro uh, was a famous magician and alchemist. <laughs> so uh, anyway, he turned in a strong rally to finish second in a mile allowance race at Churchill Downs. He broke through the gate in that Louisiana Derby, this bad eighth place finish down here. Uh, so before that, uh, so his best, I think, will make him a major uh, contender in this race. So Caliostro is uh, trainer Sherry DeVoe, DeVal, Edgar Morales. And number nine is Georgie W., uh, who won a pretty nice little uh, dirt race here at Horseshoe, but only faced three opponents in that race. Will face much tougher, so he's kind of a toss in my book. So anyway, Georgie W rounds out the field, and I want to go over here to the betting calculator and take a look at what I got, and let's see what we're working with here. So anyway, verifying, I think you, you have to kind of start with verifying up top, but like I said, he is vulnerable to the close. So the next would be your eight horse, uh, Caliostro, and I think the seven hay strike. I mean, none of these are probably surprising anybody. But I will add in the one transect and the four on the stage in, a, say, a, an exacta or a trifecta more likely. So you got a one, five, eight, seven, four, right? Five, eight over one, four, five, seven, eight. One, four, five, seven, eight would be for a try. So you would, uh, Obviously, switch this over to a try. So it would be the five, the eight, and bear with me. 
Let's see how much this costs. It's not going to be that much. It's two over five and five, right? $24 ticket. Uh, if it comes in chalky, you'll, you'll, you'll make a little bit of money. But if one of these other uh, value horses come in second or third and you get the winner, could pop. But that that's it for that one. Uh, so onward and upward. Appreciate you watching this one. And uh, we're going to have more uh, with Belmont Stakes Day. I call it Belmont Stakes. It's not Belmont Stakes. It's Belmont Derby Invitational. And then we got the Belmont Oaks and a couple other stakes races. So uh, till next time, see you soon. Thank you for watching. Race to a thousand subs. Help me out.